Morning, Glory America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. I'm Hugh Hewitt. My guest is David Bonson, founder, partner of the Bonson Group. Good morning, David. How are you? Doing great, Hugh. Good morning. Yeah, David, you're one of my favorite guests, and you have no idea why. Do you know why? I think because I'm offering you congratulations on a great Browns win over a bad Bengals team. Well, the Bengals aren't bad. That's that's bad, bad reporting. That's one reason, but actually, David, actually, David, it's because you never asked me to promote anything. Nothing. Well, and so you never say, hey, tell me about the Bonson Group or things like that. So I'm going to do that first. I have David on because he actually knows what's going on in the economy. You see him on the business channels all the time. David, tell people about the Bonson Group and what you do. Thank you very much for that, Hugh. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, We're a private wealth management firm. I was a managing director at Morgan Stanley for many years. We left, went independent. So now we have 60 employees around the country, seven offices managing almost $5 billion. And we do clients tax planning, estate planning, investment management, uh, soup to nuts, but we do so with very specific viewpoints about the world. We're actively managing money. We don't just index or buy mutual funds. We're actively managing money about what we believe. And then I write and speak and share what I think all the time. And some people like it and some people don't. And that's our business. Well, I will tell you, if I had not been with the same guy for 30 years, I would have David Bonson managing my money. And you can follow him on Twitter at David Bonson. Now, David, to the to the big stuff. Um, I think I think the economy is in a ditch. And I looked at stats yesterday on mortgage originations. They are lower than they were at the lowest point in 2008. What's that tell you? Well, I don't see that data point as necessarily a bad thing if the reason you're not having mortgage originations is because we were overbought in housing. The challenge, though, Hugh, is a lot of the economy depends on ongoing activity in construction and so forth. The biggest issue we have is that we have underbuilt houses and there's too many zoning laws, zoning restrictions, environmental issues, and now a high cost of capital that's preventing more supply from coming. So you can't clear the market. There's still high demand for housing, but there isn't enough supply. So prices are too high and affordability is what it is. People can't buy what they can't afford. So I think that that is a very specific issue within the economy, but doesn't necessarily speak to some of the broader other issues that you're having in the economy. Back in the days when I was a land use lawyer for big developers, we used to trot out the stat, one job on a housing project means four jobs downstream. It's the new automobile industry for America. People are still buying houses, but they're they're buying houses that are too expensive. They're overreaching. We don't build the kind of houses that were built at the turn of the last century to accommodate massive inflows of people. And I don't know if you saw the story out of the reporting in Massachusetts and New York, the migrant crisis is crippling states that said, come on in, because Greg Abbott is sending them on in and they had no idea and there's no place to put people. This is a big problem, David. The economic effects of migration and caring for migrants is a big problem. How big of a problem? Well, I think politically, it's a massive problem. Um, economically, we know it's a big issue and different states are going to deal with it different ways. But then I think socially and culturally, it's a whole nother category of problem. It's really exposed, I think, some of the hypocrisy of the left and that sometimes good intentions are not good enough. And there's going to have to be real meat on the bone from a policy standpoint. You're going to need grownups in the room as to how they're going to deal with it. And you have blue state governors that are now saying to Washington, D.C., no Biden administration, you can't just ignore the border issue. I'm looking at a New York Times article that came out yesterday. As migrants are placed around Massachusetts, towns are welcoming but worried. And in here is buried somewhere. The stat I'm looking for, I think it's $45 million a month out of the Massachusetts state budget, is going to reimburse towns that are obliged. If they have a hotel, they are obliged to pay for the migrant to go into the hotel. They're also obliged to educate the migrant children. This is a massive expense on state budgets, David. And, you know, in California, there are already 70,000 people on the streets of Los Angeles City and County. 
probably 75 or 80,000 now. I haven't looked at the most recent stat. What does that do to an economy? Well, in this particular case, the, the blue states that have said bring them in, the problem is not they can't afford necessarily to deal with it. That's true, too. But the bigger problem is that their bluff got called. And so there's no limiting principle to say as a uh, extremely progressive virtue signaling leftist, we want everyone else to come in and we want you um, conservative folks in Arizona, Texas that are all complaining about this to be quiet. It's now invited the conversation to their backyard. And this is one thing I believe in. And you and I share the same Christian doctrine. It is not compassionate to mandate that other people do something that you think is a good thing to do. They now have said it, brought it into their backyard, and they don't have the policy framework to deal with it. And as you point out, they don't have the economic wherewithal to deal with it. So it's exposing the total emptiness of this virtue signaling progressive ethos. I agree with that. Now let's go to pure economics. The G20 is a gathering of the 20th largest economies minus Russia and China because they won't go anywhere where Putin can get it arrested in China. Did it produce anything of note to your eyes? Yes, it produced two things of note. First of all, there will come a time where Russia won't be in the G20, not just because Putin isn't legally allowed to show up, but because they won't literally be one of the top 20 economies in the country. Obviously, China otherwise would have been there. And the two things I think it pointed out is the Biden administration's efforts uh, to strengthen economic ties with Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, and this sort of Indo-Philippine, um, uh, uh, that region, economic alliance is very interesting. And I think probably important for U.S. interest as China-Taiwan uh, tensions circulate. But then secondly, I can't believe that President Biden explicitly said in the Vietnam press conference that um, Chinese economic difficulties now make it less likely that China will invade Taiwan. I don't believe the president has ever uttered the words that China is thinking about invading Taiwan. Um, there's been allusions to what would happen in hypotheticals, but he, he uh, may have been off script, but it was a very peculiar uh, concession in my mind. And of course, he's wrong. Uh, economic difficulties do not keep countries from doing crazy things. Ask Putin. That, that's exactly right, David. It makes it more likely that he has to divert his population away from internal difficulties, which are mounting and massive. I want to ask you finally, as I do every month, about the Fed, interest rates, and the prospect of a recession next year. I don't think they're done raising. Uh, do you? And do you think we have a recession coming next year? I, I do think they're done raising, but it's important to note that I've thought that several times already and been wrong, and, and as many others have. And so if I'm wrong again, then so be it. I think there's almost no chance they raise at the end of this month. Fed Agreed. funds futures are implying a probability of 93% that they don't hike. But it's a jump ball at the November meeting, and um, I think you're seeing uh, dovish talk now. New York Fed Governor John Williams said over the weekend that he thinks they can now sit and, and watch a little bit. Even some of the more hawkish Fed governors are saying the data is indicating there's no need to do more. By not cutting rates, though, they're still staying very uh, tight. It's still tightening. And I just don't believe, Hugh, that going into the election year of 2024, that they're still going to be hiking rates. There's no precedent for it. 2016, they went the entire year without hiking when we were at zero and they had said they were going to do it. They still stopped. So maybe I'm being overly cynical about the politics here, but I just don't believe they'll continue hiking going into an election year. And one more question, David. People always want to ask this from people who know money. Uh, your average investor, are, what is the distribution you're doing between bonds, equities, cash, and what I call fixed assets, dirt, gold, and other things like that? Remember, Hugh, it doesn't help a particular person hearing this to hear what we do on average, because if we put one arm in the refrigerator and one arm in the oven, we're not creating a very great portfolio. Each individual person has to have their own unique allocation. We right now are something in the range across our $5 billion of about 55% dividend equities, 
and about 20 to 25 percent in fixed income and the remaining 20 percent in alternatives, real estate, hedge funds, private equity, things like that. But a typical investor right now needs to have dividend equity. That's really going to be the key to deal with inflation, growth and income. David Bonson of the Bonson Group, it is always a great pleasure to talk to you. Once a month, he comes in here and speaks clearly, candidly about what goes on when you manage that much money. I, I really can't imagine the stress of that job. David Bonson, have a great week. Follow him on X, the site formerly known as Twitter, at David Bonson, B-A-H, B-A-H-N-S-E-N. Stay tuned, America.